I met uh, in my former career as a journalist and uh, who really ignited a passion in me for Parkinson's disease research. Um, over the years I've not only grown to love her and see what she's going through as a person with Parkinson's but since then lost an aunt to Parkinson's disease and my great uncle passed away this fall from Parkinson's. So it is a uh, family concern of ours as well so we're particularly interested in the genetics. In my new role as the development director for Susan G. Komen for The Cure, that healthcare concern in general and about wellness uh, is a concern of mine and uh, I think should be a concern of all of ours, how, uh, how all of these diseases perhaps are interconnected and what science can lead to in terms of cures. Uh, because, you know, just because some dollars might go to something called Susan G. Komen for the cure with research there that's supposed to be for breast cancer doesn't mean that there might not be a cure that is found for another disease like Parkinson's because of that research. Just as we know that the stem cell research that you all do may be looking for a cure for Parkinson's or other neurological disorders might bring a cure in another area. We all have to work together. My name is Dr. Mark Katch, and I'm a neurologist, a movement disorder person. I've, I've kind of spanned the clinical and the research. I have one toe in research and one foot in clinical research. Um, tried to work with Dr. Katie when he first came and helped uh, try to get him the cells he needed to get started, and he's taking it from there. We're just kind of supporting and trying to hopefully be the end users of the research so we can apply it on a day-to-day -day basis for everybody. Um, my name is Jared Ketchen and I just I recently graduated in 2010 from Knox College and I'm, I'm going to medical school in uh, August of 2012 so I've really been interested in stem cell research and, and I've just begun uh, researching it so I don't know too much about it so that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about being here and, and being for this talk. And what, what did you do today? You did something special today didn't you? It's something special to, oh, your, 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 uh, maybe not so much stem cell related, but I got my black belt in Taekwondo, which is a type of martial arts. All right. Yay. Thank you. I'm Craig Katie. I'm at Bradley University in the biology department, and I've been doing stem cell research for, I guess, about uh, eight years. And uh, for me, the field has really opened up, the diversity of the field. Uh, the numbers and different types of stem cells available have just increased tremendously. Uh, my laboratory is working with a new type of stem cell called an IPS stem cell, which is a very powerful stem cell, uh, comparable to embryonic stem cells. And in fact, in my laboratory, we're about ready to, ge to generate uh, heart cells from IPS stem cells. And our next step will be dopaminergic stem cells. So uh, we're very excited about the field. But I think it's a very bright horizon because of the diversity. Uh, we're also in the process of working with nanotechnology people in generating materials that support and scaffold stem cells. This has applications for heart disease, uh, Parkinson's, and neuro diseases. So for me, I'm very excited about the field. Um, and I know Alan shares my, my excitement. Um, before I, I quit, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dennis McManus, who actually was my colleague back when I was at SIU School of Medicine and is the reason I'm in stem cell research. He actually gave, he gave me a paper in 2000 from Eva Macy at the NIH that looked at uh, injecting stem cells into a mouse. And she was looking at heart disease. And she's a very brilliant researcher, also looked at the brain and found that stem cells migrated into the brain. At that point, he convinced me to go into the field. So, Dennis, why don't you say a couple of words? Yeah, I'm a, a neurologist. Uh, uh, my real expertise is in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, uh, my mom died of it. I have an uncle that uh, also died with uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, so I'm interested in the degeneration of, uh, of brain cells and, and how to uh, uh, regenerate them. And I think there is a, a plethora of data that was coming out when I was unfortunately enticing you, or fortunately, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, that uh, neurogenesis does occur in the brain. Uh, when I was young and being taught about how the brain works, uh, brain cells didn't divide and it didn't grow. Took the time out to show that they did grow, did a nice time-lapse photography that I think had some uh, effect at the World Brain Conference or whatever, uh, showing uh, neurons dividing. And these were human neurons and showing that they actually do this sort of thing. 
Uh, and it really kind of brings up the whole question, if we, you know, do we have stem cells in our body? And the answer is yes. And if we do have stem cells in our body, why are they not working if we have Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease? And what is the translational problems of getting those stem cells to the proper niche, uh, then to then go and do the proper signaling that they have to do to function? And I, that is where um, uh, I've been kind of stuck, if you will, in our, or working on, is really kind of tracking uh, uh, how these stem cells uh, uh, generate uh, into either progenitors or then go off into become form neurons and uh, seeing exactly how they connect and improving that they connect. And so this is uh, why I'm involved with in vivo microscopy uh, as well as uh, generating the stem cells so that we can watch them and track them and show exactly where they go. Okay. And I'd like to introduce one more person. This is Erin Cook, a first year biology student at Bradley and she has just started in my lab. So Erin, why don't you say why, you're, why are you in my lab? Why don't you, why you enjoy this? Well, when I first visited Bradley, I had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Katie and see his lab and learn a little bit about what he's been doing. And ever, that was in May. All summer long, I just kept thinking about, wow, that's really cool. I could be doing this next year. And I went to talk to Dr. Katie, and now I'm working in his lab. And just the possibilities of all the stuff that they're doing, like medically, the applications of this is just insane. <laughs> so I'm really excited to be working in his lab with him. So.